Greetings, friend. Notice how this puzzle looks like an arrow kind of pointing down to the bottom of it, and then you have like this shelf of digits right here, and then it steps down. This puzzle is called Watch Your Step, and it's by Chaotix. And I'm going to show you how to solve this blindfolded. No, just kidding. Actually, I will show you how to solve it notation free. I'm not going to make any Snyder notation marks or center marks in this grid as I solve it. Not only that, I'm going to give you some fun facts about my Friday featured setter. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, first thing you want to notice is look up here in block three. You have quite a few digits looking at it from over here in block one and block two and something looking up from down here in block nine. You might notice with these two threes and this three, the only place left for three is right here. And then with these two ones, the only place left for a one in block three is right there. And that gives us a two, four, nine in these three cells. Well, I have the two cutting across row three, so that's got to be a two. And this nine has to be over here, which just leaves a four from right there. We got all that knocked out pretty quickly there. Now, let's follow these fours. You got two fours here. You have this four. The only place for a four down here is right there. You know, this is just some simple cross hatching that we're doing. And then with these two fours and this four, the only place left for a four in block nine is right here. Nice. Now I want to show you something here with these fives. All right. You got this five that's coming down column seven. And then you have the five cutting across row nine. Well, the fives are limited to these two spots here in block nine. The significance of that is since they're limited, to the same row, row seven in the block. This is called a pointing pair. It means a five cannot be anywhere else along row seven. And since there's only two spots, if we can solve one of these cells, we can solve the other one right away. And so I'm gonna highlight this just as a marker to kind of show you that if we can make some solves, we can actually uh, solve one of these cells. We can solve the other one right away. And in fact, we can, because look at these nines. You got the two nines right here in column seven and nine. So where can a nine be here in block nine? Well, one nine has to be right there, which means now we can solve this cell for five. All right, nice. And then we can look at what else is affecting this block. You can see there's two eights here. So there's only one place left for the eight and the block is right there. And now there's a nice little trick here. Chaos actually does this trick twice and that's really the key it's beautiful logic here so i'll show you this first one i'm going to give you some fun facts after that you notice you have this two six eight right here you have a four seven nine that means these three cells are a naked triple the only three candidates that can be in there and that would be a one three five i'm not marking that but i will color that to show you that's a naked triple the other thing about it when you see this pattern where the three candidates for the naked triple are also within a block. That's a locked triple. So it's locked candidates. And what it means is not only can you eliminate those three candidates from the rest of the column, which we already have, but you can eliminate those candidates from the rest of the block. So a one, three, five can't be in any of these cells. And that is important to note. Okay, how does that help us with the puzzle? It helps us by looking at where the sevens can be. You got these two sevens and this seven. So seven has to be right there. And then look here, the three remaining digits are a one, two, and a six. You might think you can't solve that, but we actually can. Because of the six right here, this cell cannot be a six. And since we already know one has to be in one of these three cells, then we know this cell can only be a two. So we can solve that for a two, which leaves a one, six pair here. We can solve this cell also for a two. And before I move on, I do want to reveal a fun fact about my Friday featured setter. I always ask this question and I love the answer. I say, how long does it take for you to set your puzzles? And Chaotic said, usually just when he has time, he'll set one and it usually takes him about an hour or less. I find that amazing. I don't think I could set a good Sudoku in an hour or less. He must have a lot of practice. And what I do love is he's always got some kind of neat logic that you have to find to make progress here. So this is the first part of that logic. We're going to see something like this show up again. If you like this kind of solving and want some exclusive content, 
Consider joining the Smarty Party. Click on the pin comment below. I have a September skyscraper puzzle pack out right now that you'd love to solve. I'll give shout outs to the first three people who can solve it. All the details are in that link in the pin comment. All right, moving on with this puzzle. Like I told you, there's a one six right there. This would be a one three five. This is going to be a four six eight. Remove the highlighting here. But what you'll notice is something very cool that Chaotix did. All right, and then you've got to find this to move on with this puzzle. Notice that this column has a six, a seven, and an eight. All right, so that can't be in this cell. Also, notice you have a six, seven, eight right here. So a six, seven, eight can't be in either one of these three cells. So where can a six, seven, and eight be across row four? Well, it can only be in these three cells. So this is called a hidden triple. Whenever three candidates are limited to the same three cells in a house, in this case, the house is the row, that's a hidden triple and no other candidates can be there. So we know these purple cells can only contain six, seven, or eight. And this is gonna be amazing how this is gonna help us. Because let's focus on where twos can go, all right? We, we made this two right here, and you have this two coming down, column two. So the only place for two now in block seven is right there. Now with these twos and this two, since we know this cannot be a two, the only place left for a two in block four is right there. This is awesome stuff. So we're able to solve that. And now what we need to see is you have the seven cutting across row nine. That means the sevens are limited to they, these same two cells in block seven. And so they're actually a pointing pair of sevens. Well, remember the purple cells can only be six, seven, or eight. This cell can't be a seven because of this seven. And now it can't be a seven because the seven has to be in one of these cells here in block seven. So we can actually solve this cell now for a seven. This is nice. And you gotta be able to find this hidden triple in order to make this kind of a solve. Now, what else can we do in column one here? We're missing a one, a five, a six, and a nine. And you may think we can't solve anything here, but actually we can. All right, first we need to look and go, you got these two nines here, it means this has to be a nine, okay? And then with the threes, you got these threes here. So a three can't be here, a three can't be here. This has to be a three. And remember how I told you about pointing pairs with the fives? We can remove this color first. See how this five cuts up column five, and you got this five cutting across? That means the fives are limited to these two cells. So the fives are actually a pointing pair again across row one. Five can't be anywhere else across row one. And since you already have a one and a six here, and we're missing a one, five, six, nine in the column, this cell has to be a nine now. Okay, so we're able to do all that to solve this cell for a nine. Let's remove these extra colors because I still want to find this six and eight right there. These pointing pairs are going to come in handy again. You got this nine coming up here. You got this nine cutting across. Now the nines are limited to these two spots. So then I'm going to use this color. I'll use a little bit different color here. Let's go for uh, blue for the nines, not to confuse them with the fives. And so now a nine is a pointing pair here in block five. So nines can't be in these two cells. You got these two nines. You know this can't be a nine, also because of that nine there. So this cell is the only place left for a nine in block four. Awesome. And now with these two threes, we know this cell can't be a three. The only place for a three now is right there. And now with this one, the only place for a one is right there. And now we're looking for like a five, six, and an eight. Okay, so the six looks at this cell, the eight looks at that cell, and the five looks at this cell. Can't solve that just yet, but we're making more progress here. So since we filled in this one right here, let's look across row nine. All right, and we're looking for a one and a six. We got that one, so this now has to be your six makes this a one and makes this a six. This is going to be uh, a one seven now, which leaves a six and eight to these two cells. And then because we have the seven right here, the only place left in column one is now 
it's going to be a five. Okay. And now let's look. What do we need here? I said a six and an eight. And it looks like we also need a seven. We can't solve these three cells yet, but we're making so much good progress here. So now let's look across row six here. See if we can figure out one of these cells. You might notice you got a five, six, seven, eight right there. Okay, and then you have, it looks like a one, two, three, and a four, all looking at this cell. So this can only have one possibility remaining. Whenever you have eight different candidates looking in one cell, there's only one thing possible, and that is a full house. So this is a nine. And so now we know of these two cells, that has to be a nine. And now with these two nines and this nine, we can solve this cell for a nine right there. As I get out of color mode, I'll solve it. All right. And then it looks like we have solved all of the nines in the puzzle. And let's switch to the fours. You got these two fours and this four, so we can solve for a four right here. And now with these two fours and this four, we can solve for a four right here. And with this four, solve for a four right there. All right, anywhere else for the fours? Nope, we got all the fours taken care of. All right, after the fours, let's look at block six now and see if we can figure out the six and the eight. Okay, that's the only two cells remaining here in column nine in block six. I got an eight right there. So now we know this has to be the eight. This is the six, and this last colored cell has to be your six for that six, seven, eight hidden triple. Awesome. All right, and now we know we got this eight and this eight. We can solve for an eight right here, which leaves us with a five. And these two fives, we can solve for a five right here. We have a full house cutting across, and we're going to get some more great solving. This has got to be a three. Nice. And with these two threes and this three, we can solve for a three right here. Okay. And with these two threes, this is a three. That's a one. Nice. With these two ones, that's got to be a one right there. And we're making more progress. Let's keep looking here. Okay. Let's look down here. We need a two, five, seven. I see a two and a five right here. So I know that's got to be your seven all right and then looks like we need a one and a six right here i got my six there so here's your six here's your one here's going to be your seven looking good now with these two ones we can solve for one right here we're just missing a two and a five you can't solve the two and the five yet but we can't solve this cell because we have a full house in here so this is going to be a two now we can go two and the five with these two fives that's got to be a five all right looking good and now what were you missing here in block two in column six looks like we're missing a six and an eight got my six here so here's your six here's your eight with these two sixes this has got to be a six with these two eights this has got to be an eight and then that's going to be your seven which means this has to be your seven and your last cell is a two I couldn't show you all the tricks I use when I solve a puzzle notation-free in this video. Check this one out to see some more. Thank you so much, Chaox, for being my Friday featured setter. Please consider supporting me through my Buy Me a Coffee page. Thank you so much for watching.